All right, everybody. So this right here is the cheapest Glock that you can build. And the reason for that is, if you don't know, in like 98% of firearms, the frame or the receiver is the actual firearm. All the rest of this stuff, whether it's the slide, everything else, are just considered parts. So legally, according to law, the ATF and everything, the frame is the actual firearm, except for things like maybe the SIG P320, where it is a chassis system, so the grip is really just a called a module. But for the Glock world, this is going to be your frame or your receiver. And the crazy thing is this one right here from SCT is 100% completed, ready to go for 50 bucks. Now how you decide to outfit that frame can obviously determine how much that's gonna cost, but today we're gonna to talk about how you can get yourself the SCT, get yourself an optics ready slide and a Holosun 507C X2 optic like on my Warport right here and still come in under 500 bucks with the red dot. And that's really a crazy price point because generally the Holosun 507C X2 is like, 309 to like 315 bucks pretty much everywhere you find it online. Now, if you are new to the channel and you like seeing stuff like this SCT frame or learning about it or kind of expanding your 2A knowledge, or you just like the content, consider hitting that subscribe button. One, it helps the channel out and will help you see the videos more. And if you hit that bell icon, you'll get a notification when the videos come out so you don't miss anything. And then if there's any kind of deal going on or something, you'll be one of the first ones to know about it. Now this particular frame right here on this one, I did borrow from my buddy Jonathan at Tactical Toolbox, then I put some of my own parts on it just to kind of test it out. And I couldn't get one because they were completely sold out for some time after his video, but now they are back in stock. So and if you've never seen my channel before, I will have a list at my blog post that has all the parts and everything where you can just find everything and make it super easy on you. That'll be the first link in the description and I'll pin it in the comments for you. But when he first handed this to me on the range, I was like, man, that is like really blocky. It just feels kind of weird. But then he just kind of smirked and he's like, why don't you shoot a mag through it and then let me know what you think. It actually does feel good when you shoot it, but at first touch, it's just like, it feels square. It feels like you're holding a box. Now I know a bunch of you are gonna have questions about how this thing feels out on the range. How does it run? Is it reliable? And of course, holster fit, cause that's very important. And we're definitely gonna have to talk about that when it comes to the SCT frame. So you guys will have all the information you need should you decide to go down the route of like building the cheapest, probably most highly outfitted Glock that you can with an optic and everything already on it. So let's talk about what the SCT frame actually has to offer for you. And then we'll talk about the good, bad, the ugly, and what it was really similar to that was out several years ago. Well, as I said, the SCT frame is a 100% ready to go frame. The texture on this thing is that sandpaper style, which is extremely aggressive, but not abrasive. It's very good to use out on the range. The front and the back straps are gonna have like a linear style groove pattern to them. Just a little bit more texture on there for recoil control. That trigger guard is double undercut. It has the same line style texture underneath of that for just a little bit more grip. Up on the top of that frame, you're gonna have a little bit more of that texture where the meat of your thumb kind of meets that slide frame area. It has textured ledges up front, which is gonna help you not only as a reference point or a touch point, but also will help you control that recoil impulse. It also has a four slot pick rail for all of your attachment needs, whether it's a light or a little bit of mini bayonet. And since this is a Gen 3 Glock frame, it will accept any of the standard parts kits or parts you want to put on there for the equivalent Gen 3. And as you can see, I've got several different things on here from the original stuff Jonathan had on it for testing. For instance, that slide I'm running is that 9X19 vapor slide, and it is sick. Okay. 
I've also got that newer PSA red dot on here for some long-term testing. That's been turning out pretty good. It's a very nice optic. It's the classic series, a little bit more budget friendly. And I've done a video on that that you can check out as well. So I've not only run the slide that Jonathan tested from PSA, I ran the 9X19 Vapor slide, and I did run my stock standard PSA dagger slide on there as well, all of which ran completely flawlessly. The cool thing now is since I bought my dagger, PSA has come out with a ton of other stuff as far as not only colors, but different slide cut options. PSA has a bunch of different colors from gray, flat dark earth, standard black, green. They've got threaded barrel options, hollow sun mounted slides already, slides with vortex optics on them, and they're all available at a pretty solid price point. It's a veritable tactical buffet on PSA's website because they have so many different, not only window cuts, but options for different iron sights, whether you want those iron sights in front of the optic or behind the optic, the colors, and then they've just got all kinds of stuff going on that you can choose from. So you can really dial in what you wanna get. Now, you can also choose to get a fully built slide with the barrel all internals or a stripped slide and go with all your own stuff. But the cool thing about getting the complete slide if you do is it's not only gonna come with the barrel, all the internals and everything, but it's gonna come with your recoil spring and everything. So you're just gonna slap it right on the frame and then you're good to go. Now that you know all the options the SCT frame comes with, let's talk about how she actually runs out there on the range. Now, since I've had this, I've been able to put a couple of hundred rounds through it. And not only did I test it with that vapor slide, but I tested it with my standard PSA slide as well and a standard factory Glock slide, and I had no issues at all. But like I said, it really does feel odd in the hand until you start shooting it. It's almost like it grabs your hands and kind of your hands tighten around it under recoil, sink into those recessed areas, and then it just runs super flat. Now I know somebody in the comments is gonna say, well, that 9X vapor slide, it's all ported and it has the barrel work done to it, so that's how you can run that thing super flat, right? Well, PSA slide right here that fits like a dream and functions just as you would expect, and you can really run the thing just as flat. It just feels weird until you start yanking on the bang switch a little bit. So overall good with the SET, right? Well, let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we're gonna talk about the ugly first. Now, some of you may not just like the looks of this thing. You may take one look at it and be like, well, that thing just looks horrific. Well, I kind of like it. Now, the reason I do like it is because it's very reminiscent of something that was out several years ago, and that is going to be the Strike 80 frame. I was a big fan of that, thought it looked really cool. But this one is different because they just changed a few minor things in it to make it fit holsters a little bit easier. But what about the good when it comes to the SCT frame? And obviously the best thing is gonna be, it's only gonna cost you 50 bucks, not a bad deal. And the cool thing is for that 50 bucks, you get all of the options that you generally have to pay a few hundred dollars more for when it comes to a standard Glock. And that's going to be the stippling texture, the double undercuts on the trigger, the accelerator or reference points with texture up on the front, these grooves in here around there, the glove bevels that are going on all around the frame right here, how it's nicely sectioned and smoothed out everywhere. That stuff costs a lot of money to have somebody get in there with a Dremel, somebody like DEFCON 3, Julius over there that does amazing work. His frame jobs will cost you like 300 to 400 bucks by the time it's all said and done. This whole frame is $50. Now there is a little bit of, I guess, what you could consider bad, and that is it definitely, this thing feels funky, right? So when you grab this thing, just the blockiness of it, the little pinky ledge, and just kind of the way it feels in there, definitely feels weird. But the minute you start pulling the trigger and you start sending that lead down range, it feels really good. It sinks into your hand, or I guess your hand sinks into it, since it's the solid object, right? And it just feels quite good out there and you are really able to run this thing super flat and super consistent. Now the only thing I could really kind of look at and be like, ah, that might be a little bit of a problem is how they did the magwell right there. So you can see how they've kind of added some lines up in here. It's cut up and then goes over. That's just adding more like 90 degree angles. And if you've got bigger hands, you might pinch your hand putting a magazine back in there. Honestly, I don't think it'd be a huge problem, but when I look at it, based on the hole back here that you can see, right there and the way that that frame is built. Something tells me they're probably gonna be coming out with a magwell for this. And I don't know if the actual Strike 80 magwell will work on this, but 
I might get a hold of one to try that out as well. So that's just one more thing to keep an eye on, but probably not a big deal for like most people out there, unless you've got gorilla hands that are gonna, you know, put all that extra meat into the mag if you jam a mag in there too fast. As far as offerings go, the SCT frame is only gonna come in the Glock 19 size right now, and it's only going to come in black. But let's just face it, being that this is basically strike frame 2.0, you're probably gonna see other colors and other sizes. It's just gonna be a matter of time. I'm sure a big question is going to be holster fit and what works with the SCT frame because not all aftermarket frames work with your standard Glock style holsters. Now I did test the SCT with this slide and the optic on several of my holsters, but I specifically wanted to show you this Bravo concealment one because as you can see, it is very form fit. It's vacuum molded to the slide. Even on the backside, you can see just how perfectly formed it is. And I wanted to do that for a reason because this is very unforgiving. So if it's off dimensionally, it's not gonna fit, but since it was redesigned to fit standard Glock holsters, you can see it goes in there, locks in, and you are gonna be good to go. And the reason for that is because when they redid this frame, they redid the trigger guard so it would actually fit a standard Glock holster which is a good idea because now you can have a full custom frame for 50 bones and keep all the rest of the Glock 19 holsters, all that stuff that you already may have. But for those of you that don't already have a Glock 19 style holster, I do have a multi-fit option for you in the way of the tier one MSP. So as you can see, that's currently got my War Poet DR920, which is another Glock clone with that light on it. Now, the cool thing about the MSP series of holsters is it locks onto the light, not the pistol, and it's really not any bigger or bulkier than your standard kind of appendix rig with a mag caddy holster, but it will fit everything from that War Poet design right there, all the way up to big, thick SIG X Fulls like this one, locks in without an issue, and again, it's gonna fit pretty much all of your modern striker fired pistols in one single holster. So if you don't have a holster, it's really kind of just the way to go if you carry appendix and you like this style of holster. And as the SCT frame for you, well, it's been reliable, it runs flat, and it is super cheap, giving you all of the options you want, like better stippling, reference points, double undercuts, all that good stuff coming in at 50 bucks, and you get to build it exactly the way you want from the ground up, so you don't have to start with a 500 or 600 hour pistol and go from there. But the cool thing is, since it is a 100% complete firearm frame, if you already have a Glock 19, you can just order up the frame for 50 bucks, throw your standard Glock 19 parts in here, and if you don't like it, well, you're only out 50 bucks. And if you don't have a Glock 19, find a buddy that does, borrow his, then you can buy the frame for 50 bucks, check it out, see if you like it, and then if you don't like it, you're only out 50 bucks, and you don't even have to own a Glock. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you leave them down below because I will try to answer them for you. And I would love to hear your opinion on the SCT frame, which is basically Strike 2.0 in 100% configuration. Make sure you get subbed up, get out on the range, have some fun. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. I will see you all on the next one.